the lone sharpshooter is honing his skills. David Boys, holed up in his Montreal apartment, has one of the world's most deadly arsenals of words. His trigger finger is fast, his vision sharp, his instinct killer. I think when I was first starting to play, I was playing 20, 30 games a week, and uh, I just twigged to it right away when I first started playing, and I don't know, I think what it has to do is you know, you're pulling basically a bunch of random stuff out of a bag, and then uh, you're taking this chaos and you're creating order with it. Wishies, tongue sheets, advisees, adasset, dirtiest, tritides, uh, rigidest, uh, recoded, lithites. When I'm playing, they'll just pop into my head. I'll, I'll just pull the tiles out of the bag, pick them on my rack, and bang. If there's a word there, it'll pop into my brain. Boys is on his way to Las Vegas, Nevada, where he will try his hand at the world's biggest shootout involving vowels and consonants. He will test his firepower against the toughest wordsmiths anywhere. When the dust settles, there will be a new World Scrabble champion. play is not the good clean fun that takes place on your average kitchen table. It is fiercely competitive, fanatically intellectual. I'm not, I'm not having you take this, this, this is effectively the Scrabble Olympics. We have national champions from 40 different countries, the cream of the crop, uh, the very best players in the world, many of whom came at great personal sacrifice to get here. They've come from as far away as Sri Lanka, Bahrain, and Nigeria. You can always leave your they are focused on thousands of words in a language, English, that many of them can barely speak. But everyone gathering here knows their way around a Scrabble board. And it has little to do with the way the game is usually played. It's the difference between playing chopsticks and playing a Chopin suite. It's, they're different games. Uh, the, the players that are at this tournament that take this game seriously devote hundreds of hours to studying words. The best Scrabble players in the world are Canadian. In the 1999 World Scrabble Championship held in Australia, Canadians finished first, third, and fourth. Among the Canadian superstars is Boys, a former world champion, who cuts the figure of a Marlboro man on the Scrabble circuit. But the Grand Master of Scrabble and the man who's putting his champion title on the line is Joel Wapnick, a music professor and human filing cabinet of words. Nobody who's won the tournament has ever repeated, and has ever come close to repeating. Um, it's, and, and the time before this, the time before I won in 90, uh, seven when I played. I came in 30-something, 30 36 or something horrible. Um, so uh, anything could happen. I won't come in last, though. I know that. <laughs> Canada also boasts the number one woman Scrabble player in the world. Robin Pollock Daniel mastered the game by playing Wapnick and Boys on a regular basis. Her career has ranged from psychotherapist to advertising copywriter. Sure These days, she's a stay-at-home mom in Toronto. Okay. We share a culture that most people don't have, and that we we have a not only does every endeavor have a language, we literally have a language that no one else has. The most mysterious Canadian character is Adam Logan, a 26-year-old Ottawa native. A Scrabble prodigy, he is a mathematics genius who earned a PhD at Harvard at the age of 24. His speed is legendary. He may be the most feared Scrabble player in the world. 
The Canadian players have their arch enemies, a ragtag band of Scrabble eccentrics from the United States. So it goes, you stay indoors and you play Scrabble. <laughs> New Yorker Joel Sherman, another former world champion, nicknamed G.I. Joel, not because he plays with military precision, but on account of his volcanic stomach. The G.I. stands for gastrointestinal. Joe Edley, the game's master of meditative calm, concentrates on his breathing and warms up with Tai Chi. He once lived under a tree for three months. Brian Cavalletto is both an awkward oddball and a swaggering options trader from Chicago. His plays are the stuff of Scrabble history. Tonight is the gala reception. Players are reliving past championships, trading stories, and sizing up those who will be bitter enemies when the games begin tomorrow morning. It all comes to a head every two years at the Scrabble Championship. Eighty-nine of the ninety players are ready to go. Missing is Canada's math genius, Adam Logan. Anxiety ripples through the Canadian contingent. I will uh, make sure that one gets here for you. Each competitor has 25 minutes to play their game, and Logan's clock will start whether he arrives on time or not. He once showed up at a tournament uh, at the Providence, uh, the national championship in 2000. He showed up so late that he only had about four minutes to play his entire game, and he came in and played his whole game in four minutes, rushed in, still wet from the shower, uh, and beat his opponent and scored 500 points. What's the Adam Logan update? Adam's on his way, I just saw him. Yeah. Yeah. Be here in a minute. Yes. This time, Logan has made it. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Collective shake of the tile bags, the Scrabble equivalent of a starter's pistol, and the World Scrabble Championship, the WSC, gets underway. Today is day one, and it's still anybody can win, even the, you know, the guy from Romania who is still learning to speak English, mathematically and theoretically could win. Scrabble at this level has more to do with memorizing words than literary skills. It is no accident that the top players are mathematicians and computer programmers, not English professors. Most people use around 20,000 words in day-to-day -day life. The official count of permissible words for the World Scrabble Championship is nearly seven times that, about 130,000 words. With that many words to memorize, the experts don't bother with definitions. The words they use are merely symbols with point values. There are so many of them that most people don't know they exist. So they're intimidated by the fact that you can play the word OE or AA or AI and people look at it and think, oh, that's bizarre, that's not a word, when in fact, these words exist, they're out there, they're part of what makes English such a, such a beautiful, diverse language. Um, and what Scrabble players have done is taken these words that others have decided are acceptable in, in, in a dictionary and committed them to, to memory and given them a life, almost. Expert Scrabble has little to do with the game most people play. Speed is crucial. Players have 25 minutes apiece to play all of their moves. Go over, you lose points. The key to championship play is scoring bingos, 
Scrabble slang for using all seven letters on your rack in one turn, which scores a 50-point bonus. The real trick is to see words hidden in a jumble of letters. That's known as anagramming, and without this skill, you can't get from A to B on a Scrabble board. But luck also comes into play. Players are limited by the tiles they draw. Beautiful, beautiful game. It's, it's flowing, it's mathematical, it's musical, it's architectural, it's visual spatial, it's smart, it's stupid, it's dumb luck, it's all of these things in a confluence of clackety tiles. I love it. Day one of the World Scrabble Championship finishes. Joel Wapnick is in first place, having won seven of eight games. Logan is in second. Pollock Daniel is hanging in there. David Boys is trailing the pack. One point loss, two point loss, not my day. His lackluster performance on day one will force Boys into comeback mode. Those familiar with his style of play know he's more than capable. Dave Boys is unpredictable. When I, sometimes I get that feeling when I'm playing against Dave, I'm playing against God. He can play what he wants, where he wants, when he wants, how he wants. He can play a phony, he can play with your mind. He's absolutely brilliant. David's more like the Americans. I mean, he's jumpy, he's excitable, chain smokes, he's very nervous. You'll see his foot bobbing when he plays, or he'll be, he has nervous ticks that are very noticeable during a game. Boys stands out among the Scrabble elite for never having played a serious game until the age of 20 but he always had a thing for games. I like games in general. I think I have a, you know, a healthy competitive streak in me that causes me to like you know, competing. It's better to compete, compete in a game than it is in real life, right? Boys surprised the Scrabble world in 1995 when he won the world championship in London. Not long ago, he left his job as a shipper to study computer programming. Now he works for a Montreal software company. Boys is going to need his ability to process vast amounts of data if he wants to stay alive after day two. I figure if I get to the final, that's, that's the thing. I'll say I'm one in 12 going in, and then as it goes on, I hope to lower and lower those odds. And then once I'm in the final, I'll say, OK, now it's one and two. And then hopefully by the end, I guess I'll come second. <laughs> some strange reason. The second day of the World Scrabble Championship. Canadians Joel Wapnick and Adam Logan are sitting in first and second places. The prospect of Canada dominating the field surprises nobody who follows elite level Scrabble. I don't know. I mean, you tell me. The Canadians always have done well. And whether it's because there's been a core of good players um, or whether there's something in the water north of the border that I don't know about is, is as much a mystery to, to the American players as it is to, as it is to anybody else. It's been uh, bandied around for years as to why Canadians are, uh, in many respects, the best Scrabble players in the world. Of course, the American joke is with nothing else to do up there. You know. Board games and intellectual pursuits are not looked down on as much as they are in the States. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that there's a geek chic about Scrabble, although I'd really love for there to be. If there is a secret to Canada's success, it can probably be found at the local Scrabble Club in Montreal. It is one of about 200 such clubs that exist world over. Yet this club has produced two world champions and the number one woman player. People come here basically because they don't have anybody to play with at home. They like the competitive aspect. And uh, I don't want to scare off novices. I've always told them, come and you can play at your level. You don't have to feel intimidated. You don't have to study if you don't want. 
but it is a club, just like if you join a chess club or a uh, uh, bridge club, you're there to play, that's the main thing. So you cannot be indifferent, you cannot play nonchalantly, you cannot play haphazardly. You have to pay attention to the strategies you use, you know, because one single letter, one single letter could be such of such strategic importance, you know. Just S can transform one word from singular to plural. Just D can take a word from the, from the present to the past. I started off by opening up a local newspaper one day and seeing that there was a, quote, Scrabble club in my area. Couldn't believe it. I'd been playing Kitchen Scrabble for 15 years and always won. So I came to the club. I just elated and... Uh, Joke, joke, I was going to win every game, and guess what? For the next six months, I lost every single game and realized, hey, there must be something to this game because the better player wins nine out of ten times. Canada has no monopoly on Scrabble talent. In Las Vegas, players from developing nations are the tough new guns in town. Players like Pakorn Nemet Mansouk, an architect from Thailand who is in third place, are proving they can hold their own against any native English speaker, even if they have difficulty speaking the language. When we play Scrabble, it's no speaking. Yeah, it's just, just play the word. Uh -huh. And when I begin playing, it's quite, quite hard, but after playing for 15 years, it's, it's not hard anymore. It's one of the one of the great one of the great phenomena in Scrabble. You get these people in here that can barely find their way to the bathroom or ask how to or ask to, or order a, a meal off of a menu, and they're sitting here throwing down these obscure seven and eight letter words. Uh, it says something about how much people love English and how universal it is in our world. But it also says something about the human brain and its ability to process what for them is like binary code. Scrabble transcends language. It's really about words which are really symbols in the game. Letter, it's about letters making symbols. So what the foreign players do is they memorize the dictionary. They don't know the meanings. In fact, meanings are meaningless. Scrabble has come a long way from Poughkeepsie, New York, where in 1933 it was invented by an unemployed architect named Alfred Mosher Butts. By studying the front pages of newspapers, Butts assigned point values to letters. The game was called Crisscross Words, and Butts sold it out of his garage until 1948. When businessman James Bruneau took over marketing, the game was renamed Scrabble. In 1952, while on vacation, the president of Macy's discovered the game and placed an order. Demand went wild. For a full year, people lined up to buy the board game. Intellectuals were said to play the game in Latin or French. In Hollywood, there were rumors of Scrabble with dirty words. Everyone from the Queen Mother to composer Igor Stravinsky were big fans. The craze calmed down, but Scrabble was here to stay. Microorganism, a plant or animal of microscopic size. S. And that spells? Two of what you said, Scrabble. It's what words were made for. As day two comes to a close, it becomes clear who has a shot at Scrabble glory and who doesn't. After an unbeatable morning, Dave Boys loses three of the afternoon's games. I think I'm out of it now. Maybe if I win eight tomorrow, I may have a slip chance. But, uh, no, I just, I didn't have any chance this afternoon of the games I lost, at least. One of the games, they were really awful. The other games, they weren't so bad, but you're just watching, you know, watching the person you're playing against get 50, 60 points on every turn. Like, you know, sometimes you just sit there and watch it. That's all. He knows what those numbers mean. He will likely remain a former world champion from 1995. Nothing more. Joel Wapnick remains in first place after winning all four afternoon games. Right behind him is Adam Logan. Logan is keeping to himself. 
He got to Vegas late because he had to give an exam to his University of California mathematics class. In the city that doesn't sleep, Logan is spending his evenings correcting exam papers. Everybody's got a soft spot for him, Adam, because we, we still sort of see him as this little, cute little nine-year-old kid who can barely see the... I mean, he was still beating adults at that, at that point, but he could barely see the board, and he was still crushing his opponents. Um, he's, he's, uh, he's, I would say, probably the smartest Scrabble player there, there is. But he's also, he's also your typical absent-minded mathematician, too. I mean, he acts like a nine-year-old child. The 26-year-old Logan has long been Scrabble's Billy the Kid. He started dazzling this wordy universe at the tender age of nine when his mother brought him to his first tournament. The first time that I played in the North American Championship, I, I think I was 13. Um, and what I remember about it is that then I, I was still treated a little bit as a kid. That, I mean, when I was playing, it didn't so much matter, but at other times. And then the next year, in, in the following North American Championship in Washington, um, I was just one of the experts, and if people managed to beat me, they spoke of it to their friends with pride in the hallways, and people somehow feared having to play me. By the age of 21, a precocious Logan, on his way to a PhD in mathematics from Harvard University, won the North American Championship. He is hard to penetrate, um, and, and he is renowned for his, for, his, for his mental processing abilities. This is a guy that can play a game in five or six minutes and still score five or six hundred points. Uh, this is someone whose intellectual prowess in what he does as a mathematician is superb. And it has translated for him onto the Scrabble board. He, he approaches it very mathematically, and he's, he's the sort of player who you know is automatically processing everything, almost without thought. Logan is unbelievably fast. He's probably the fastest, maybe the fastest Scrabble expert in the world. So he's a, he's a Scrabble machine. Despite his massive vocabulary, Logan is a man of few words. Scrabble does have some compelling features. It's, it's a game about words, which are maybe the single human passion, the one thing that makes us human rather than as opposed to animals. And also because it is a, a game of, of probability, is, it is a game where you can't guarantee success, but you can always try harder and, and give yourself better chances to win. So it, it, never, it never stops to be a challenge because you can always do better and give yourself more chances. As day two sets on the World Scrabble Championship, Canada remains the country to beat, with Logan and Wapnick occupying the top spots. Dave Boys, however, can finally afford to stop thinking about words. Something has eluded him, whether it was rotten luck, blunders, poor concentration, or all of the above. The Scrabble gods were not on his side. The third day of the World Scrabble Championship, and U.S. players go from victory to victory. Joe Edley, the master of meditative calm, gears up with a little Tai Chi. The Canadian Top Guns, meanwhile, steadily lose ground. The numbers don't add up for Pollock Daniel. She will not have a shot at the crown. Wapnick and Logan hit losing streaks just as Brian Capoletto clinches a spot in the finals. As the tournament clock winds down, Wapnick and Logan find themselves in a do or die two game shootout. Whoever loses will be shut out of the finals and have two years to think about it. Wapnick unholsters the seven letter words boosting and breaker, which means someone who collects seaweed. Logan fires back with a bingo of his own, underlit. But Wapnick puts it away with pre erect. Final score? Wapnick 458, 
Logan 393. In the next game, Wapnick again outguns his opponent. Adam Logan, after occupying first and second place for most of the tournament, will not go the distance. The lightning fast player who has amazed the Scrabble world from the time he was nine years old has been eliminated. With Logan gone, Canada's chances have been reduced from four powerful wordslingers to just one, Joel Wapnick. The 55-year-old music professor dismisses any connection between classical music and Scrabble, yet both rely on mathematics. From an early age, he liked to codify and group together random statistics. Well, that was more like a kind of obsessive record keeping for some reason. I used to keep records of license plates that my, my parents, my father, would, when he would drive, would pass a car and I'd write down the license plate number. And I suppose it's kind of like making up a word book or something like that. It's just some kind of obsessive record keeping. Wapnick's parents taught him how to play Scrabble when he was a kid, but he traces his real passion for Scrabble to a game played in Long Island in 1972 when he laid down a word that blew away his friends. Introit. His interest was sparked. I happen to like the game better than any other game. And matched to that is the fact that I'm better at Scrabble relative to everybody else who plays the game than I am in other games. I was a mediocre chess player. And uh, I'm a good Scrabble player. In 1978, he and his wife moved to Montreal, where Wapnick teaches at McGill University. Five years later, he won the North American Tournament. Winning the World Championship in 1999 cemented his reputation. Nobody memorizes words as methodically as Joel Wapnick. He categorizes this ocean of words in a highly systematic way. Say he gets a rack of letters that contain two A's, an E, and four consonants. He'll then go fishing to that filing cabinet in his brain where he stores the list of seven-letter words containing two A's and an E, and he'll run through all the possibilities. Saladang, galangal, astragal, tarlatan, tarantus, agraded, gradated, sandal, sagard, talaged, celadang, arranged, adrenals, lanate, uh, narrated, langrage, galleas, argental, agrestal, arranger, stagnate, and then antennal. That's 21, actually. Um, it's actually 20, but I added adrenals because not too many people know that adrenal takes an S. Every day prior to tournaments, the gentleman wordslinger takes an hour-long walk on Montreal's Mount Royal and rehearses his word lists. He tries to walk fast and aims at reeling off an average of 1,000 words in about 22 minutes. That's 3,000 words per hour. Joel memorizes the dictionary a page at a time, like, and, 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 and when he needs to know whether or not a word is acceptable, he calls up that page in his brain, and he recites it to himself, and if it's not there, as he recites it, then he knows it's not good. Wapnick's shot at the championship hinges on the very last round of the tournament. Well, I guess we play, huh? I guess so. Wow, well, have a game, guys. I don't know who to root for. The opponent will be James Kramer, a 43-year-old proofreader from Minnesota. Kramer's analyses of games appear regularly in the Scrabble News Bulletin read by 10,000 enthusiasts. Kramer knows what he's doing. The first moves go slowly. Then Kramer fires off three obscure but lethal seven-letter words. He starts with Slinter for 76 points, follows with Atopies, an allergic reaction, and then Yeed, an archaic word for proceeded. Wapnick about 100 points behind, is in serious trouble. After three days of competition, soundless, cerebral, and hard to understand, Scrabble has finally become a spectator sport. The hard drive in Wapnick's head is whirring through the possibilities. He has two E's and a U and a bunch of consonants that don't seem to add up to anything resembling a word. Something clicks. The word, if you can call it that, and room, 91 points. 
can this be a word? Kramer has his doubts and launches a challenge. If the word doesn't exist, Wapnick will lose his turn. The word sheriff checks the official Scrabble dictionary. This play is acceptable. Thank you. All right, so 96, 334, 323. It's a word. Wapnick pulls ahead by nine points. A few moves later, he shows just how well he knows the bizarro word by adding ed to in room. It's also a verb, meaning to catch a cold. Kramer cannot recover. Final score, Wapnick, 448, Kramer, 405. Wapnick has just become the only defending champion to make it to the finals twice in a row. Oh, man, what a relief. A relief? Why a relief? To make the finals? <laughs> I had to win my last three games, and I did it. It's thrilling. It's just totally thrilling. He will not be a footnote for 2001, a former world champion like five others, but winning the worlds again? It seems as improbable as one of his many Scrabble dreams. During the time I was playing in the, in the North American Championship in 1983, where I dreamt that I was playing Stephen Fisher, another very strong player, and instead of having tiles on my rack, I had strawberries. And I made a very nice play from 01 to 04 with four strawberries, scored a whole bunch of points. <laughs> <laughs> Two men are about to duel it out in a best of five match at the World Scrabble Championship. For the winner, a prize of $25,000, a glass trophy from Tiffany's, a guest appearance on an American network show, and two years worth of bragging rights. The contenders are both seasoned players. Brian Capoletto arrives early for the event. The Chicago options trader has decimated his hard scrabble rivals to get here. The tiles are ready, and so is Capoletto. Yes, I'm, I'm ready. Ready as I'll ever be, you know? It's high noon in Scrabble City. One man stands in Capoletto's way, Joel Wapnick. Defending champion Wapnick is back for his third crack at the big tiles. Not that he's feeling confident. Good morning, Tiny Yeah, could be better. <laughs> yeah, okay. Could be worse. Well, man, yeah. Okay. I'd rather be here than someplace else. Unlike the hundreds of rounds that took place before, the final match is staged in this small room. The action will be broadcast to an audience of Scrabble Cognoscenti, made up mostly of the 88 players who have been eliminated. They are a rowdy crowd, or as rowdy a crowd as Scrabble experts are capable of being. Hey, Joe! Game one gives the word nerds all they could ask for. It is a harrowing crossfire of seven-letter words. Wapnick opens with analyze, antigene, and poltroon, meaning a coward. Capoletto answers with indusia, the hairy part of a fungus, and cellared. But it's not enough. Wapnick takes the first game. The reason that they're top players is because they can perform under pressure. They are stone cold. They are, are, are so focused and centered that very little knocks them off. Even though you'll find people in this room that know as many words as, 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 the, as the people that seem to win a lot, uh, there's something missing, whether it's the, the ability to process the board spatially, uh, whether it's the, the, the calm inside that allows them to reach deep down at the right moment and produce the winning play. But they've got it. They've got this skill, this talent that, that is, that 
that, that's really impressive. The combatants keep their powder dry during the second game. Not even the high-minded hecklers armed with their palm pilots and dictionaries can suggest much better for the lousy letters Wapnick keeps pulling out of the bag. The game goes to Capoletto. Game three opens with Wapnick blasting the seven letter Lowry, followed by Oxid. The game slows down. Capoletto is floating in vowels. Wapnick is missing them. The peanut gallery goes berserk when it spots a seven letter word on Wapnick's rack that he doesn't see. Rezojet. Easy for them to say. They're checking their word lists. The game goes to Capoletto, who pulls ahead two to one. Everyone breaks for lunch as Pollock Daniel provides post-game replays. Second game, Joel played beautifully. We can analyze our games on a computer. He actually scored 96% in his, it's called equity, but basically 96 out of 100 in how he played. It's fantastic. He just didn't pull out the tiles. The word slingers return to the table. Capoletto needs only one win to become world Scrabble champion. He quick draws both blanks, shooting off seven letters that form ovarian. Wapnick has a less promising rack, four eyes. But he gets out of hot water by playing icily. Soon his rack looks hopeless again, but Wapnick manages to see the word wittiest, racking up 94 points. Capoletto roars back with paddlers. Wapnick is falling seriously behind. Capoletto fires off a barrage of consonants. Vojd, a supreme Russian leader. Wapnick needs some heavy weaponry, but the bag is not cooperating. His lucky red rack looks grim. Everything is going Capoletto's way this game, including two blanks and three S's. Wapnick keeps pulling problem tiles out of the bag. The board warriors are down to their last letters. The crowd of elite Scrabble players, used to detecting near impossible words, can't imagine a way out for Wapnick. Capoletto empties his rack for the last word, Eon. Final score, Capoletto 447, Wapnick 338. Game over. And given what happened in 91, I think it's, you know, I'm glad. Thank you. Yeah. The tiles that I got um, were not as good as the tiles that Brian got, for sure. I got two out of the eight blanks. On the other hand, I can't really blame it on the tiles because I did blow a game. Six bingos and uh, eight opening plays, whatever. The words for me are just a way of becoming as good as I can. It's true that perhaps 85 to 90 percent of all the words that I, that I study, I'll never play. But that doesn't matter. Uh, I still have to know them. satisfying. It's like a eureka phenomenon on a, on a kind of a, I mean, it's not like discovering a theory of relativity or something like that, but on a small level, it's, uh, it feels creative and it feels very satisfying.